So I'm Irene, Irene Bedard, and I grew up in Alaska, and my mother is a Nupak Eskimo, my father was French Canadian and Cree, and they had a little romantical story. He was stationed in the Air Force in Anchorage, and, and um, that's where they met. She was a girl who grew up in Koyuk, Alaska, and came down to Anchorage to study secretarial skills, and they met, and the rest is history. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, I've, uh, I've been having a really, really amazing life, if we want to talk about life. One thing I discovered a long time ago when I was a teenager or a young kid, I was one of those kids that sat at the front of the class with the glasses, I was all shy and never said anything to anybody. I mean, Irene, do you want anything? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was me. I was always looking up at ceilings and looking down at floors and I was um, really, I liked to read books a lot and tell stories. I, had, I was the oldest so I ended out um, teaching a lot of um, telling a lot of stories and teach, having to teach a lot of things to my younger brothers and sisters. So I learned early along that, <clears throat> early along that, um, that learning was a good thing. And then as I've gone along in my life, I've learned that you never stop learning. And then the further along I go on in my life, I've learned that that's what this life is for. It's for learning. Wherever you're from, whatever, whatever your, uh, you know, your idea of the Creator is, or, or your religious things that you might do, the one thing I do know, whether you be Buddhist, Christian, or follow the ways of Crazy Horse, uh, this life is for learning. And the Creator put us here so that we could learn things. And I think every person, wherever they are, that's where they are, because they were put there for one, for two things, that they couldn't that the Creator knew that they could handle whatever it was that they were, you know, having to go through. And the second thing is that, of course, if we didn't have a challenge, we'd be bored. And, and challenges teach us things. And who, what parent wouldn't want their child to learn? So, that's what I think this life is for. <laughs> Fantastic. What do you think about love, Irene? Mean Love. I love love. I'm a glutton for love. <laughs> no, I, I, I think that um, love, I mean, romant the romantic version of love, I, you, that's one thing I think you really have to know that it's not something that you can, you can look for outwardly. That it's something that comes within yourself. Because the moment that I stopped and said to myself, you know, I'm fine. I had just moved to New York City and I was having, you know, a mood with a backpack on my back and that was it. And um, I, I really had, uh, you know, this whole thing that happened to me when I moved to New York City. I was walking down the street and realized, wow, there's so many people here. And I loved watching people, so that's what I would do a lot when I went out. And I was just looking at all these different characters going by and, you know, hearing their stories as they whizzed by and, and you know, watching people walk by with their cell phones and they all have their own little lives. And I realized to myself, wow, they, they don't care. I, I can be whatever I want to be. I can recreate myself in whatever way that I wa want to do. And, um, so that was one thing I learned from New York City, that um, that I, I guess from coming from a small place, you 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 know that that those fa you know the family of your community, they they have, they have these certain bounds that you grow up in, and I knew that they were um, that th there were no bounds in New York, and so I had come to this place where I had realized I was just fine the way I was. I was strong. I knew what I wanted to do. I wasn't, you know, I had just graduated from college and, and I had a real strong idea and I knew I could take care of myself and I would survive and I didn't need anybody.
but I think love is the key to happiness. I really do. I don't think that you could be happy without love. And people try, but you can't. It's just not, not, going, not going to happen. You know, nothing else can really, money, power, fame, none of that can, can make you happy, but, ha but love will. Love will, even without you knowing it or wanting it to, it will. And it's very strong. And I think we as a people have so much love in our, in our souls. We are, um, our spirits are very full of love and very loyal um, to each other. And I grew up with a lot of love in my house. Um, a lot of other things, you know, a lot of sadness as well. But the love has always, always been there. And it always will be. And I know it. <laughs> Fantastic. Irene, what do you think of this earth? This earth. This earth was created by the Creator. This earth is our mother. This earth is our life and our sustenance. And, and um, with Guardians of Sacred Lands, we had to do a statement of purpose of what, what, what does it mean guardians of sacred lands. What does it mean that we are Native people who have taken this upon ourselves to start an organization called Guardians of Sacred Lands? And what it means is that we as a people know we have kept our drums, our songs, our stories, our relationship to the earth. Um, we know in our hearts that if we do not, if the society that we live in does not change its ways, our great-grandchildren, maybe our grandchildren, and maybe even our children may not have a place to live because of the way that we treat it. And our mother is, is where we get our food. It's where, it's where we get our love. And, and, and when I walk out, I grew up in Alaska. And that's, I'll tell you, that is one place. You walk out of Anchorage, you go five miles outside of Anchorage, and you are in the middle of untouched wilderness, and you really do realize, I am just this little tiny human being in the midst of a vast universe, and the sun is kissing my face, and I can feel the wind on, on the grass, on the mountains and, uh, around me, and, and I know that she sustains me. I can feel her warmth just like I would my own mother. And that is what the earth is to us. And if we do not stop removing her lungs or trying to dig out her kidneys or, you know, we need that uranium, we need that rainforest, we need those things. But if we do not consider that if we may need them today, correct, you're right, we might need them today but because we are using them today and hoarding them all for ourselves and not considering that if you cut down the rainforest there's not going to be anything left for your children our children the coming generations so that's guardians of sacred lands the earth like i said it's what holds us up man <laughs> and we spin around in it and and who knows, you know, we may just be in the eye of some big huge hawk in some other universe, but, but we're here and, you know, somebody's looking over us. And we are being cradled in our mother, the earth. This is Irene Bedard, and this is Life Love.